Yeah, I don't think we're overly experienced. I've had more experienced teams. Um, we'll be playing a bunch of young guys. We'll be dependent upon, I want to say, uh, eight, eight underclassmen that'll play, uh, that'll compete for minutes. Uh, and who knows, all, all eight of them may play. But we do have a, a decent mix of some older guys as well, which is really important, of course, especially in, in the, the state that this league is in. Um, and especially with the non-conference slate that we have. Uh, so the contributions from our senior wings, from Kavarius Hayes, and then, you know, a couple of the, um, the other older front court guys in Keystone and Gorjak Gak uh, will be very important for this team. Obviously, you're re replacing the presence in the, in the locker room like Chris Chioza. How do you do yeah. that? And where does that start from your side? Yeah. It, it's something that we can attempt to cultivate. Um, you, you'd like to see it happen somewhat organically. Um, and it remains to be seen who will step up in, in some of those leadership roles. Uh, I think from what we've seen, we haven't spent a lot of time in the locker room to this point. It's such a long season that I, I try to avoid a, a bunch of meetings and I try to avoid long meetings and long film sessions in the fall because we're going to be in that locker room a lot uh, for a long season. And, uh, but I can tell you that in the limited amount of time that we've been on the court to this point, uh, I think Kavarius and Jalen have probably stepped up the most um, in, in a leadership capacity. Um, Kavarius, I think it's, it started a little bit more so last year and it's carried over. And uh, Jalen has made a big jump uh, in that regard. Uh, I think he's feeling good about himself and the, uh, his, his physical and, and mental output stemming back from some of the, the feedback that he got from the NBA last spring. He's playing well, and um, he's trying to lead by example, and he's, he's been more vocal than he was a year ago. Mike, you mentioned the, uh, the non-conference slate being pretty tough. When you have a team that's a little bit less experienced, does that maybe offer some benefit in terms of finding out who you are a little quicker? Yeah, maybe so. Um, I think that you could look at our non-conference and talk about all the the negatives that it could present, but but you, but you also could find a lot of positive that it could present, and I think that's one of them. Uh, to to find out early, you know, who you are and, and who you can count on, and who needs to get better at what, and and offensive identity and defensive and and um, you know, uh, your rotation and, and so on and so forth. And, you know, throughout every year, just about, we've, we've made, like every staff, you know, we've, we've made some changes. You, you find out your, what puts your guys in best position to be successful. And um, I, don't, I don't think that, that, that you can find that out as easy by playing inferior opponents. Yeah, how often have you had to rely heavily on a, a first-year point guard? Ooh, good question, Edgar. Um, I guess this would be my uh, my second time assuming that either Andrew Nemhard or or Mike Okaru um, wins that spot. You know, and Mike not being a first year guy, but it would be his first year really playing exclusively the point, first year starting. I guess I'm, so. I'm more talking about like Andrew. I mean, chance there's a good chance he's going to play. A good bit, yeah, I would yeah, think. Andrew You're going to rely on him a good For bit. For sure. Yeah, we'll be relying. Um, it would be my first year as a head coach. A kid named Speedy Smith, who's a big reason I'm at Florida today. Uh, so, so what's the challenge, and how do, how do you kind of bring a guy along quick, quickly enough that he's going to um, be ready by conference? There are a lot of challenges. Uh, I guess it, it would probably start with, with as it did with Speedy, um, with Andrew um, trying to simplify the game for him as much as possible, simplify his role. Um, uh, through film, uh, trying to help him become as comfortable as, as possible, um, as soon as possible. Um, we, won't, we won't be relying upon him to, to be a huge vocal leader, to be an emotional leader for us. Uh, but we will be relying on him to direct some traffic and to to lead in that regard. Um, 
and then and also allowing young guards to play through mistakes. You know, these, he, he's going to have to play through some mistakes, and Michael Carr is as, as well, and um, continue to breed confidence as much as possible. Um, and then, and of course, have an open line of communication, uh, not only with the staff but with with myself. You know, on a daily basis, um, and at the same time, ride him. You know, let let him do what he does because he's a. Uh, it, it's not like he's a huge work in progress. A Andrew's a very talented young man, and um, he's a high-level passer. He's a very high-level IQ guy, and um, he's going to be a really good player. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, he'll be he'll be one of the better passers that that we'll play all year. He 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 he'll have a chance to be in a conversation um to be one of the better passers in college basketball. You know, who knows how many assists uh that means, um, how many highlights he produces, uh how many minutes he'll play. I'm not sure, but that that is his gift. He uh he he sees the game uh, at a high level, he's a split-second thinker. Again, he's very intelligent. Um, and not only is he, is he an elite passer, he's an elite passer with size, which makes it even a little bit easier for him to, uh, to deliver some passes that other guys with equal vision can't deliver. No. I, I, I tell our guys, and I've told you guys, I don't care. I don't, I don't care who starts. I just want to win. Um, it might be the day before our first game, you know, which is six weeks from today, um, which Denver just reminded me of, which put a, put a little bit of a pit in my stomach. We've got to get to work. Obviously a guy like Keith Stone who has – seemingly improved every single year he's been here. What is the next step for him, and how much have you talked to him about kind of taking that vocal leadership role that you touched on? I want Keith to worry about Keith. Um, and I don't mean to undervalue leadership. I, I really don't. I just think that, again, I'd, I'd like for some of it to happen uh, naturally. And I, I don't – I want Keith to continue to evolve um, – his versatility and to improve on his on his consistency, both offensively and defensively, before he worries about those type things. Um, I, I, without asking, though, he he is he has been a little bit more vocal this fall, um, but his 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 efforts been been good. Um, but he's um, he's still a guy that um, is striving to be a high effort guy at all times. Um, Especially defensively, offensively he he can be. Uh, Kevin never did that. Nope. Kevin Brockway, that just never happened. He would he would be singing the Beatles instead of. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Pat. Um, where was I? Keystone. Very talented offensively. Uh, I think he, he's playing with a lot of confidence right now. He knows he's a little bit older. I think he's feeling pretty good about himself, and I expect him to have a, a big year. Uh, can you speak to the the impact um, Al Pinkins has had with the staff? How he's meshed up to date and his impact on the uh, with the bigs on the floor? Yeah, sure, Coach Pink. Um, yeah, yeah, very smooth transition. You know, um, if for those of you that know Coach Pinkins, he's uh, he's not. It's not very difficult to get along with Al. Very laid back. Um, really, really works. Uh, very experienced. Um, great person. So it's it's been seamless with him and. Um, our other two full-time assistants and those three guys, I think it's very, very important uh, for your three assistant coaches to work well together, not only from a basketball standpoint, but to a mentorship standpoint, to a recruiting standpoint. And uh, those guys have hit it off unexpectedly. Um, and Al's got a lot of experience with front court guys, and, and Darius did a, a good job with our front court guys. This, this gives our guys just a different look, a different voice, and frees Darius up in some other areas as well. And so Darius and Jordan will have a little bit more responsibility uh, offensively and defensively, and they're doing a terrific job, as Al is. Um, also, if I may, the, uh, you mentioned Andrew. The other two freshmen, how they hit the floor running yeah. since at all. 
started for them. Yeah, uh, Keontae is uh, he's a big time athlete. He's he's got a chance to be a, a really high level defender, rebounder from the wing spot. We've got to get his his motor going. He, he's got to he's got to play with that athleticism all the time and and utilize it. Um, a great kid, working hard, and uh, I, th I think he's going to be a good player, of course. And Noah Locks had a really good fall to this point. Uh, not a guy that we've had to question effort one day. Um, takes good shots, high-level shooter, understands the game. Um, probably was an underrated defender coming out, and uh, we've been very pleased with his work ethic and, and toughness uh, to this point. They'll both play. All, all three of our freshmen will play. Mike, kind of looking big picture, going into year four, uh, where is the program at in terms of where you envision building it and, and kind of, I guess, where do you view as maybe the next step you guys need to make? Yeah, first off, I, I didn't build anything. Uh, there's a guy named Billy Donovan here who was pretty good, uh, won a few games. But you know, we, we did talk about in year one trying to recapture some of that incredible culture that he had here, of course. And um, we've had we've had glimpses of it, and we've got to have we've got to have more consistency. You know, we've we've got to finish. Um, and we were we were very close, of course, a couple of years ago. And last year we had some highlights, and we had some deficiencies and some lulls. And um, you know, in terms of what I expected, I, you know, I just I guess I just didn't go into it envisioning uh, you know an end result for a particular season. And I, and I, that's not going to start now either. Um, the way we look at it again is is just the the, the growth mindset, just the uh, enjoying the process, getting better every day, and, it, and it, that's going to start uh, Friday full time. But we get, we have a two hour workout tonight where it, it'll be about hey, let's not set goals on winning this game and being competitive in this game and um, hoping this guy starts or that guy plays. It, it, it's it's let's all get better and see where it goes. Me or Pat? Uh, can I just rehash for you? But can you take us through where you first saw Andrew, and yep. how you identified him as as this talented kid, and, and how you got him here? Sure. Um, first saw Andrew, I believe it was in July, two or three Julys ago. Like it was a long time ago. Um, in Augusta at the Peace Jam. That's the first time I saw him live. I, I've seen him on film uh, probably a couple times between then and the next few times that I saw him live. Uh, saw him a bunch in AU and developed a good relationship, of course, uh, his family did with our staff. And, you know, um, this was a situation where he was very familiar with because he went to high school right down the road. Uh, in fact, uh, he, he took a visit here on the way down uh, to that high school as, uh, I guess, a few days before he enrolled. And he took an unofficial visit here with his family, and um, he knew that um, he, he knew how much we wanted him, of course, and he followed us very closely, and, and uh, you know, uh, he knew there was an opportunity for him to come in and make an impact, and we're very excited to have him. Yeah, Mike, the, obviously last year you had the, the waiting game with, with Egbunu and Stokes. Chase went out early, and, and you lost so, so much there in the, in the front court. I mean, does it feel better just to start this year with what you have and you know you have? A little bit. I, I think we're close to that. Pat, right now <clears throat> it, it's pretty similar because uh, I guess Chase has had one practice where he was released – Whenever we practice last, you know, with, with, with these rules, you know, you're, you're splitting up four hours a week. I, I want to say it was uh, mid last week. Chase was, was good. He was good. And um, he looked healthy. And so today will be practice number two for him. As he gets more into the flow, uh, as, as Gorjak gets released here, hopefully within the next month to two, who knows, as Isaiah gets in better shape where he can change ends consistently, yeah, I'll feel much better, much better about our front court um, than we did a year ago. Uh, you know, um, although a year ago we, we thought we were close to having Johnny Bunu back and, and you knew you had a 
you had a fifth year potential all conference guy sitting there, which which obviously didn't happen. So it's, it's different, but I do expect to be deeper. Um, and and that's leaving out Kavaris Hayes and, and Dante Bassett, who have been pretty good. You know, they they work, they're 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 character guys, they're toughness guys, and uh, got a chance to be deep in the front court. Edgar. Sorry, I was trying to get approval from Denver. <laughs> uh, so toughness or lack thereof was kind of something you brought up a number of times last year. Yeah. Ta how, how did you tailor the off season to kind of develop that? Yeah. You know, I, I beat our guys up a lot last year uh, with questioning their toughness. And in, in their defense, we didn't make the, the run that we would have liked to make in the NCAA tournament, but we finished in league play. We ended up being, in league games only, the number one defensive efficiency team in the SEC in a, in a big-time SEC year. Uh, so our guys really sold out late in the year uh, to defending at a high level, and we had some – some big time defensive performances down the stretch. Um, I just feel like, it, again, in our guys' defense, when we were so banged up and when you knew you wanted to play Chris Joseph and Igor Kulichov till their tongues fell out, um, my mistake was a, a lack of physicality and uh, a lack of um, intensity and aggression early on um, in these type practices that'll start over the next couple weeks. So. How have we tried to um, combat that for this year's team? We've done way more physicality while holding our breath tightly. Um, this summer and this fall, we've, um, we've competed for the most part, I would say about half of the time. Um, although we're not, we haven't done a lot of full court stuff, we've tried to keep stuff in the half court to deal with some of the stuff that we just talked about, getting healthy, but also uh, promoting somewhat of an atmosphere of physicality and intensity um, so we're not um, reaching those levels, those desired levels in February. Hopefully we're reaching them in November. I was going to kind of ask you on, the, on that note, what, how would you now, reflecting on last season, yeah. kind of evaluate it? And sure. You know, I, I, I still don't know if I can answer the question, would – would you have promoted a lot more physicality early in the fall? Because I don't know. We could have had a, another guy or two out. You know, we, we could have really. I just kind of mean the whole season. Sure. I and mean, you guys did have, like, a lot of quality wins. And yeah, it was an maybe interesting Maybe didn't go year. as far. But yeah. I think in, in reflection, you seem like in Destin you were more proud of the season maybe once you got away from it a couple months. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. You know, and that just honestly, I, I, I think that when I did get away from it, I thought it was more rewarding than, than I thought it was um, in, in the present, you know, um, in that the, the way that our team evolved defensively and um, in terms of, of, of last year's team's toughness and, and resiliency and, and having uh, overcome the injuries throughout the year, uh, our guys never made it a topic of discussion in the locker room. They just they came to work every day. Uh, Johnny Boone obviously didn't have a chance to help that team, but Chris Joes and Igor Kulichov were, they were phenomenal as seniors. I mean, you knew exactly what you're getting every single day. And we need a couple of guys to, to step into that mold this year. But uh, so rewarding from those aspects, the defensive, again, progression that we made, the fact that we, I, I want to say we were first or second in the country in top 25 wins. We were first or second in the country in tier one wins. I did a lot of really good things. You know, if, if you, um, you you take away a, a couple tough losses and, and uh, you advance a little bit further, you you um, found a way to beat Texas Tech, and, we you know, we might have been having a much different conversation. Like, what do you think Isaiah Stokes is going to bring you this year? Obviously, mm -hmm. um, he's got to get in a little bit better shape, but it, it yeah. seems like he's progressed a lot from where he was last year sitting out. All yeah, he's, year. he's not up to par with the rest of the team in, in conditioning. He's trying. He's battling. He's in way better shape than he was two months ago. And uh, I, I don't know what the number is as of today, but he has lost a lot of weight. I'll have it for you next time. A lot of weight. And so there's a lot to be proud of. Uh, he's cleared. He's, um, he's competing in the half court at 100%. Uh, but I know that when we start going full court consistently, he's, he'll be able to just play in 
in, in spurts, of course. And, uh, and we don't want to risk anything, of course, when he's not in great shape either. So it's a work in progress. When he does get to the point where he's in as good a shape, it, he's still going to have the go through the, uh, the, the learning curve that all of these young guys go through in terms of what we're asking offensively and defensively, his, his responsibilities on the glass, uh, ball screen defense, transition defense, just understanding what we're trying to do. I, I think he did have a year to sit and listen and, and learn, but it's different when you're going through it live. Um, but the positives that he, he could bring us immediately are his, his hands, his girth, his skill level, not only shooting it but passing it, decisions. He's a very talented offensive player. Is that a, is that a, uh, a product of having to sit out, the fact that you, you can't help but get a little heavier, can't help but lose some wind from, from being out so much? And with that name? I don't know. I don't want to discredit guys that maybe handled it a little bit better. I, I do think it's, it's tough on guys to sit. He, he'd only, he didn't only just sit for a year. He sat for a year and a half. You know, he, it was the second half of his high school season of his senior year that he sat as well. I think that he's um, always been a guy that's just been a really a big guy, and he's always battled it. Um, he's played overweight at times, you know, as a, as a kid, and he's been he's gotten himself in, in great shape at times as well. And um, he's working toward that again. Mike, can you uh, can you walk us through Jalen's decision making process in terms yeah. of coming back and what kind of led him to make that decision? Yeah, Jalen was uh, he was very open. He was transparent with myself and my staff. Uh, what he wanted to do, he did. I thought he went through it with a lot of uh, maturity. Um, he wanted to. He he wanted some NBA teams to work him out. He wanted to get as much feedback as possible, and uh, he's utilizing that feedback now to help him be the best player he can be. And he understands. Um, his deficiencies have become a little bit more clear to him coming from the NBA guys. Um, you know, although a lot of that feedback he'd been, he'd been talked to about before. Um, but I, I do think that he, he's locked in on, um, on the motor stuff, the consistency stuff, the um, being good defensively all the time, not at times. And uh, yeah, so we're, you know, I, I was proud of the way he handled the process and he's, he's had a good off season. What's your take on the new rule in terms of uh players being able to, I guess, go through the draft and then decide? Yeah, I, I just, I'm not overly familiar with, with all that stuff, just because I'm, I'm, it hadn't gotten here yet, and I haven't, you know, I haven't had to deal with it, uh, uh, you know, on a large basis yet. I, I do, I think anything that um, gives student athletes more choices, more of a voice, those are all good things. Uh oh, you, you made it pretty clear that all three freshmen are going to play. Yeah, they'll play. So that was, I mean, you're not playing eight or nine guys here. You choose. I think we could be deep. I wouldn't, I don't know. I'd love to play. Yeah, 17. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just get more minutes than the, the rest of the guys. Um, if we get everybody healthy, we could have really healthy competition out there in practice, which helps you become a better team and and right now assuming we have 13 healthy guys I'm not saying we're going to be a great team by any stretch but I can't tell you of the 13 that I just know is not going to play and I think that's a good problem to have um, um I don't think I've played 13 consistently we had a couple teams at La Tech we had one year at Louisiana Tech, where in league play, our bench outscored our starters. It's just not going to happen, of course, especially at this level and with this team. And, and, you know, we all know we've got a couple high-level scores. We've got a, a proven mismatch four. We've got one of our fives has way more experience than our other fives. You know, we've got a battle with young guards. So there is some discrepancy there it's not like we have 13 even guys but I do feel like after I don't know somewhere in that four five six range to 13 there's a ton of parity and I'm going to give these guys an opportunity every day to fight it out oh 
ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Our league is the, the state of the SEC in terms of basketball is off the charts right now. Our non-conference is a bear, and um, it gets even more difficult as we move into league play. Yeah, I think we're going to have a ton of teams that have a chance to get in the NCAA tournament. Thanks, guys.